Hi everybody, Angus Campbell here. Okay, as promised, following quickly on from uh, the last video, then we'll uh, do a bit uh, of examination of uh, what we've found so far. So, this is what we dug out the bottom of the crankcases once we'd uh, removed the sump plate and the gauze filter. First of all, with the gauze filter, you can see it's just masses of aluminium filings. And similarly, there's a whole stack of here, just to give you some idea of how much there is. There's some bigger pieces in there too. And when you start looking at some of these bigger pieces, you find, like that one there, that, to me, looks like a broken piston skirt. And then when you go to, up, over to other areas, there's some more pieces of broken piston here, without a doubt. So this is uh, some of the remains of the left-hand piston. Then over here, um, we're only talking about uh, a pair of uh, big-end bearings. Uh, so I think these these two are certainly part of that. I'm not quite sure about these two pieces. They could be and just flattened out. And then you've got the, uh, the big end cap nuts there, but no sign of the bolts. However, um, obviously the remnants here doesn't account for all of the piston and rod that's uh, been pri uh, removed prior to that. And uh, and therefore, uh, you know, the rest of it is probably with a previous owner who'd uh, done some investigation by taking the head and barrels off and able to remove what was left. Um, so obviously, um, something has happened here that's caused a catastrophic catastrophic failure. I think I know what it is, um, but essentially, the rod and the piston have got mashed up by uh, the crank once something has failed. Now if we look at the, the crank itself, the uh, right hand rod and piston are still on, there's actually no play in that journal at all. With respect to the left hand one, it is scored, but it actually isn't too bad, but it is scored. and. Uh, in measuring that up with a vernier, uh, it is outside of tolerance, and therefore that will need to be re-ground. But I think we'll get away with uh, a minus ten re-ground on that, uh, which is good. And obviously we'll do uh, we'll do both sides so they're e equal. Um, I've got new con rods; they are common with the A65 because on these motors it was the uh, stroke that was increased. Uh, the bore stayed the same. But the pistons are different because of the uh, longer stroke um, within the same barrels and head as an A65 then they've had to change the position of the gudgeon pin in the pistons and actually made it higher I think. Uh, looking at other areas of the crank um, the two main bearings are actually in pretty good uh, condition um, on the timing side, you've just got a journal on the on the crank here, but that that is uh, well within tolerance. And similarly, within the the motor, the shell itself, it shows uh, it's matte, so it shows a little bit of roughing up. Uh, but actually, it's it's within tolerance. It's measured up well, um, and all these um, tolerances and measurements are given in the uh, in the workshop manual. Where are we over here? So uh, so there you go, you can measure up to that. Uh, so that's that's pretty good news. Um, so I think the main bearings have survived and uh, what's taken the brunt of the problem is the left hand big end journal rod and piston. And actually that's that's quite a common feature 
with these engines. Now, I said we'd come back to the sump plate uh, because of all this disgusting sludge in the bottom of that. Now that sludge, when it goes through the oil and the crank, is centrifugally filtered out by a sludge trap that runs through the centre of the journals and hence you've got, uh, not on this side sorry, but on this side here you've got a screw. Now, on this side here there isn't. So we'll need to we'll need to investigate that. Uh, that's something I've just noticed. Let's get a torch. It might be plugged. The, the sludge trap is removable and therefore you can put a new sludge trap in. But what happens is, is if sludge and debris out of dirty oil is centrifugally filtered within the sludge trap and if the sludge trap becomes blocked and the uh, oil feed is from your main bearing on the right hand side, which it is, hence the slot, um, you might find that the right hand big end will get oil but the left hand won't and quite often the there's quite a sudden sh seizure of uh, the left hand rod and sometimes the piston too because obviously if there's no oil being splashed out of that left hand uh, big end then you're going to get less oil onto the piston skirts um, and what happens then is that the rod breaks as the crank keeps going and uh, the remnants depending on where the rod breaks the remnants are usually thrown through the front of the left hand crankcase and usually destroying it now in this case it's not been destroyed so we're lucky um, so that might mean that the rod broke lower down and so what was flailing around on the end of the crank as it, as it was still rotating wasn't long enough to actually do significant damage to the case however it has done damage and there we are and there is quite a deep groove going round the inside of this case all the way round from about here to where are we about there? Uh, so it's not blown the cases up, but it has worn it a groove through it. And also what it's done, which I did notice before I started splitting the cases, is there. It's blown the case, blown the case out very slightly. So, we can see what's happened. Um, I'm not worried about it though, because that's repairable. And the case hasn't been destroyed. And this left hand case is very important because on the outer side is where you've got the engine number. And that would be very difficult to replicate on a replacement case, simply because it wouldn't be back stamped with PSA. So that's very important. So this is repairable without a doubt. Uh, I've seen cases split in two that have uh, been repaired by a competent alley welder. Normally what they do with the cracks etc is they uh, they cut a groove and fill that with weld. In this case they've got the groove already cut. Uh, we'll do, need to do a bit of dressing etc but um, it is going to be possible. Next thing is the bearing on the uh, cam and again um, 
This is the one that we thought was a bit stiff. There is a bit of debris in there. They are plain bushes, not needles. Um, but again, that's not too bad. We're lucky there was a bit of debris in there. And in fact, something doesn't actually feel quite right in there. Oh, crikey. I know what it is. That's the uh, timed breather. He's down there. That's a timed breather. So we just need to look into that a little bit. Um, but again, repairable. Um, on the cam itself, that uh, the cam end is good there. And although very, very filthy and full of debris, the, uh, the right hand case uh, is clean reasonably clean uh, no grooves so lots to clean out but that's okay and as I say the all important main bearing on this side uh, is with intolerance uh, which is amazing but then you know oil was continuing to be fed to it uh, even while there were disasters happening on the other side of the engine um, so that's good news because that bearing is unique to the A70 and that's because there was much less room within the cases for the crank and therefore this bearing is pared down a little bit compared to an A65 bearing. An A65 bearing has a shoulder on it, this one doesn't. They are different. Okay, uh, we've got the oil pressure relief valve here, that's unique to the A70 as well, I haven't taken that off yet. Uh, but it's there, that's good. So as long as the uh, the spring and the, the ball of the plunger are in there, then we know that that's at the right um, um, compression rating for the uh, the pressure for this. Now, the other big issue that we had was the cam pinion uh, locking nut. And what I've managed to do with this is, uh, as you can see, I found a puller that fits, a three-leg puller that fits. And what I've done is I've put some tension on that gradually and so that there's some pressure on that nut and there's enough room here just to get a, an adjustable in to be able to turn that nut like so, uh, left hand thread, and be able to uh, slowly draw off. Uh, that pinion and the pinion has now broken from its shaft it's cracked it from the sh shaft um, not broken literally it's cracked the uh, the tension and the, and the seal if you like of the uh, pinion on the shaft so this is now slowly being drawn off so I'm going to uh, complete that uh, in the next couple of minutes and then I'll bring you back Okay, all well, uh, about uh, two or three minutes later, finished uh, pulling that off, turning it, and, and just being patient. And there we are, we've got, got it off um, in one piece. Uh, the pinion itself, sorry, gets get focused. Uh, it needs cleaning because, again, like everything else, it's got uh, Ali Swarf everywhere, um, but it's in good nick. Uh, the nut, though, I don't know whether you've ever seen that. There's absolutely no thread left on that nut at all. It's smooth. And there is thread. You can't see it too well there at the moment, but there is thread on the cam. And the reason you can't see it that well is because there's residual thread from the nut in there. So I'm going to try and extract that now and also see if uh, it'll clean up with uh, a tap, a UNF tap. Well, actually, I'm not quite sure what it'll be. I'll check. Uh, but first of all, let's clean it out um, and see if if the thread is reasonable enough to um, to reuse. So we can actually, yeah, we can actually take the cam out now. Just trying to do it one under. There we go. There we go. Now that bearing face on that end is, is good, you can see the oil is clear. The lobes are a little dirty, um, 
uh, but they're not bad. Just a little bit of surface stuff on them that'll polish off. This end of uh, the cam in the bearings is okay, but it looks as though it's got a little hot at some point, although that actually that's scratching off, that's not heat. So we'll just see if we can clean that thread up a little bit, but you can see there is thread on it. And we'll see if we can clean those out and get the remnants of the nut that's in there. I'm sure that's the case, and I'll bring you back. Okay, everyone, it's uh, job done, and it's very good news. So, this is what we've taken out of the uh, thread on the cam, and these are the remnants of the thread on the nut, and that's actually a spiral there, look at that. So these, it's almost like taking a helicoil out. And what's happened then is that, let's see if we can get this a focus. So it's not doing a very good job. There we go. Look at that. Those threads are intact. That's very, very good news. We've been lucky again. Uh, and also, as you can see, I've just been lightly cleaning those uh, cam lobes. And um, there's a little little bit to clean up. So I'll just have another go uh, with that and bring you back. Okay everyone, that's the uh, cam cleaned up a little, no pitting on the lobes, I mean they are hardened, uh, but that looks good, so cam saved. So there we have it, um, next thing will be to remove that piston and rod and clean up the big parts, the cases. I uh, might do that tomorrow and then we'll do another inspection and uh, I've already uh, arranged for the, uh, the crank to be uh, reground and also um, with the new rods and pistons that I have to be dynamically balanced as well so we'll uh, make arrangements to get that sent away for that work to begin and uh, I've also I think got a local aluminium welder that'll be able to do uh, the job on uh, on this case, get that strengthened up, filled and uh, sealed up. Um, and then uh, once these are cleaned up, we'll do just one final video on this before the parts are sent out uh, for repair. Um, and then while those parts are away, we shall uh, do a bit of work, I think, on the E35SS motor and continue with the first build on that. Now we're well into uh, the lightning. But anyway, there we are. There's another reminder uh, of what was sitting in the uh, sump of the engine. It doesn't really bear thinking about. But anyway, we're well on our way now. Uh, we know we can recover this. And there's the evidence of the rest of it, which is looking uh, looking really nice. Yeah, very pleased with it. Okay, everybody. Thanks very much for interest. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks very much for watching and see you again soon. Cheers.